Our next speaker is Neryl Shaw. Title of his talk, STEM Education, Racism, Canary, and the Coal Mine. How do people learn racism? People aren't born racist. It's something that we learn, but how? And just as important, where do we learn it? As a learning scientist, I've been exploring these kinds of questions in what might seem like the most unlikely of places, STEM classrooms. Many people think of science, technology, engineering, and math as neutral subjects. What could a chemistry lab have to do with race? What could solving a quadratic equation have to do with white supremacy? But what I think many people forget is that learning is a social process. It's something that we do with other people, with teachers, with fellow classmates. And all of that is happening within a historical context, which means that in this country, race and racism can never fully be taken off the table. What the research tells us is that STEM spaces are highly racialized and that racism is a core part of what it means to be a STEM learner, especially for students of color. That makes STEM education racism's canary in the coal mine. Because if we're seeing racism play out in supposedly neutral spaces like STEM settings, then we know that racism continues to be a systemic problem in the rest of society as well. A few years back, I, I met a black student named Will. And Will was in the ninth grade. He was taking honors geometry. Uh, he had one of the highest grades in his class, and he talked about becoming a, a chemical engineer one day. And I'm asking him about his experiences learning math, and he tells me this story. He tells me about a time when uh, the teacher is walking around the room passing back tests. And he's sitting next to uh, one of his friends, Derek, another black student in the class. The teacher comes by, hands Will his test. And Derek leans over, and he sees that Will got an A on the exam. And he turns to Will, and he says, oh, you're hecka smart in math. You must have some Asian in you. Now, you might be thinking, that's just a joke. Right? Derek is joking. Right? What's the problem with that? But there is a problem. How is Will supposed to build an identity as the brilliant and capable black student that he is when his blackness is getting treated like a liability, like a deficit? And what are we supposed to make of this false narrative about Asians and math? Right? It sounds like a compliment, right? but what my research shows is that it's actually quite dehumanizing to Asian people. It turns out that being seen as too good in math positions Asian people as hyper-intelligent robots rather than as full human beings. The fact is that moments like this are happening in classrooms across the country just about every day, from elementary to college. And every time that happens, our students of color, but also our white students, learn and relearn these racial hierarchies about who can learn and who can't, who's smart and who's not. So what can we do about it? I think one thing that's really important that all teachers, but STEM teachers in particular, need to do is to take seriously the subjective racialized experiences uh, of their students as learners. One trap that I fell into when I was a high school math teacher was thinking that equity was all about access to academic content, about getting more black and brown kids into STEM fields. Now that's important, right? That, that matters. But what I didn't realize though was that racial justice is also of making sure that every student is seen as a full human being. Teachers can also monitor their biases, racial or otherwise. My team has developed a classroom observation tool called Equip, which is designed to make anti-bias work actionable for teachers. It's so important that we support all teachers in going beyond just talking the talk of diversity, equity, and inclusion into making anti-racism a daily, regular part of their teaching practice. When we do that, we start to do right by students like Will, Derek, and other children of color. So I think there are concrete things we can do in STEM education to make it more anti-racist. At the same time, I think we need to be humble about what's possible. Understanding racism in STEM as the canary in the coal mine can shed light on how racism is operating beyond the school walls and the world around us. But I think it's also opening a much larger question, which is, how do we arrange society in ways that make it possible for all people to learn anti-racism? That's the burning question that's driving the next phase of my work. 
And I, I hope it's a question that all of us feel the urgency to take on together. Thank you.